Hey there, this episode of Podkit wasn't really planned. We never really intended to record it in this particular way. Brian and I recorded the Nexus special first, and then we recorded our usual fringe. Well, Brandon wound up in our fringe, and after talking for about an hour, we decided to make this an official episode of Podkit, even though we didn't really have a plan or docs to go with it. So with that in mind, I hope you enjoy it, and it's a lot of fun. Have a good one. This is Podkit, episode 10, Fringe Kit, on Sunday, September 13th, 2015, and now implementing UberKit. This episode is hosted by Brandon Johnson, Brian Mitchell, and Ryan Rampersad. This episode also has show notes at thenexus.tv slash pk10. Woohoo! Yay. That was, only, that was an hour, right? Uh, an hour and one minute. Uh, cool. I'm not, you know, obviously before truncation, so not a problem. So Brandon has been uh, pinging in the um, Slack. Yeah, so I haven't, I haven't looked because I didn't want to like stop talking for thirty seconds. And be like, oh wait, I'm recording. Yeah. So there he is. Hi, Brandon. If you listen to the French Eye. Hi, Brandon. I'm reading. I'm reading what you say. Should we invite him to the call now, and he can just be in the fringe? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, let me find out how to do that. How do you use Hangouts? Like, who? You- Hold on, I got this. Okay, What's you- his, um J at Brandon. No, it's B. I- B at Johnson. I don't know. He's in. He's in my um, in my circles. So I'm just posting an invitation. I don't know what's gonna happen. Maybe it just goes away. Maybe he'll come in in like five minutes. <sighs> I think it, I think, okay, well, so I did one, and it just made a new chat. I don't know what's going on. I'm in the video feed. I, I wasn't in the other feed. Well, we'll find out what happens. I don't know. Okay, because I see, yeah, there's a hangout, this hangout, it says, which I'm assuming refers to my other tab with the video. Yeah. Yeah. So I noticed on my actually I should wait if Brandon's coming in. I was I noted on a fringe note topic on one of the thing. Yes. Apple Apple Watch at four months. Right. I have a few comments about it. He was just in Slack like thirty seconds ago and now he's not. Well oh yeah, okay, I guess. He's probably on his phone, so it's just in and out. Phones? Who uses phones? Yeah, here, who here, knows? Here, let me let me tell you. I didn't even bring my phone down here today. You are you are adventurous. I I, I don't know. I'm, I, I apparently I've just given up technology in the last six hours. All right, I'm gonna log into my cell phone carrier and see how many. Oh, come on, system error. Log in. It's done that twice now. I click log in and it system error. And then I just click log in again and it works. Um, I've used one minute this month. Since August 16th, and I've used six SMSs since August 16th. Six. Wow. Six. Everything has been iMessage, but even then I don't iMessage because no one knows my phone number here. But I have used uh, 2.2 gigabytes of data, so. Yeah. Uh, oh, wait, some... missed call from Brandon. Uh, I wonder if that worked. I heard something. I'm just going to try adding him again. So I think it might be a new video or a new chat. I don't know. Maybe. I'm opening it. It's a new tab. Yeah. Okay. We'll see how this works. I'll close that one. Hey. Anyone home? Hello? Hello? Hi. Is this the wrong hangout? I don't think so. It's, hey, the, it's the right one now. Right. Okay, now I'm in again. Hey. Hey, hey. from Denmark to you. It's so cool. Hey. This is awesome. Are you talking like on a phone right now? No, why does it sound like I am? Yes. Yeah. Okay, give me two and a half seconds while I readjust one last thing. Good luck. 
It could I'm just not... be that I'm listening through my studio headphones. I mean, so. I, I hear it the same as you do. So you guys might get a kick out of this because, um, so I just got back from, um, Hey, there's from video. That, Hi. From that thing. Hi. Yeah. So I just got back from that disaster simulation thing. Um, and this is my microphone, right? Okay. It takes the same USB cable that I had to hijack for my printer. Oh, um, so I'm talking over these headphones, which kind of suck. Uh, I mean, I think this so is kind of cool. Be... I mean, you could pretend to be like um, a radio caller. Yeah. And then you could be like Merlin, right. first time caller. Yeah. <laughs> first time caller, long time listener. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh, I'm really excited to hear what you guys have done with uh, with the Nexus special this week. Um, I know I know it was a huge week. It was pretty big. Pretty big. Pretty it was an big. hour and one minute episode before not editing <laughs> awesome awesome uh so one thing that i'm interested to hear um well that i'm going to be looking forward to hearing you guys thoughts about is the apple tv kind of app store scenario like did, did you guys talk about that hi hi microphone um i'm interested to hear what you guys said about that um i know it doesn't make sense for you to recap all that stuff because i'll just hear it when it's done and out and in the world but um if you want to give me like a quick, like, what, what did you guys think about that? Are you are you going to get one? Is anyone you know going to get one, et cetera? I, I will probably get an Apple TV uh, over winter break. Nice. I'm going to live in a house in the spring, and it, it will have Plex, so it works with my current setup. So Nice. That's awesome. That basically says it for me. Mm -hmm. um, I, don't, I don't use my Apple TV a ton, but... Not this last clear, at least, because I had a smart TV. My roommate did. But the year before and the year before that, it was used a lot by the people I lived with, at least. I don't watch that much TV, but it's nice when I do want to use it. Yeah, gotcha. Um, yeah, I like it. I don't know if I'll get 32 or 64, but that will keep yeah. that yet. That baffled me, right? Because apps can't store data. Oh, yeah. Apps. Right, we didn't right. even talk right. about that. Hey, I've good thing we're here right now. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, um, apps can use 200 megabytes on disk. Everything else is treated as cache. So you have to download everything else from iCloud, not from somewhere else, from iCloud. So d that means okay. stuff's going to have to be stored in users' accounts or what? So I'm what not does, quite what sure. does that mean or for, mean? Uh, they, like, content? Like... So, like, games. You have you have a game. You know, a lot of iOS games are gig and a half, mm -hmm. right? So you have 200 megabytes of basically an installer and some core essential stuff, and then everything else you download from their servers and you cache it. But if you don't, if you don't use the game for a while or you watch some crazy movie or yeah. load some other apps, you come back to that game. You have to wait up to several hours on slow people internet to get that game going again. You know, that sounds pretty bad. I'm See, part of me reads this as almost like that, the, the you know... Same thing Apple did with the with the original iPhone. Same thing they did with the with the watch. Like, oh, apps basically can't have native storage, but eventually, yay! Next year, right? WWDC, right? Exactly. we're innovative. I think exactly. you know, if it's a big, I think they're trying to push for this, so it's they're trying to guide the market before it becomes a thing. But if it is clearly having struggles with it, I think they will up it or remove that limit. Yeah. Right, but at at the same time, I think they're just trying to leave enough space for their own video streaming and services. And you know, it might just come down to throwing a lock on the on some gigabyte, saying, "Sorry, your your space is full, even though it's not." So yeah. you can still stream or whatever. Yeah, but it's yeah, it that's... sounds like they're you know that two hundred megabyte is more focused on streaming apps. So you, you know, you download the video and you stream that, and that's fine deleting, but for games, it's it's hard, but you can't really classify. Games can have more space because then you have some media provider that says, "Oh, yeah, we're a game. Look at this little thing in this one corner of the." Well, app. well, I mean, maybe, but don't apps get uh, even for the Apple TV? Don't they get you know filtered or you know uh, app review? Yeah, they yeah, will yeah. absolutely go through app review. So, I mean, I don't think that's too much of a burden on Apple to say, "Okay, well, clearly this is a streaming service, and or clearly this is a not streaming service, and will be subject to these." very terribly restrictive terms yeah that's true yeah it's it's just interesting to see because that restriction seems both arbitrary and intentional which is a weird a weird kind of 
paradox, right? Because as, I think as you, as you said, Brian, like it makes sense that they're pushing people towards this like lean app model. Like it's, it doesn't seem like they have any intention of moving away from that. If I, I think that you're right in, um, in taking the perspective that it's, it's more likely that they're going to like allow you to add a lock saying, just don't delete this portion or, or something like that, but it's going to be, it's going to be limited. So there's a, there's a point where, um, there's going to be definitely like limits to that, but like that's going to annoy people so much. Exactly right. It, it it seems like both annoying, a little bit arbitrary, but also weirdly sensible, but mostly arbitrary. I don't know. I'm I'm still having trouble kind of parsing that, but I guess we'll just have to see how it plays out. I'm sure Apple <laughs> knows full well how many of their Apple TV users have high speed internet. You know, better than oh, five okay. five. I'm sure they know, you know, stats like that. And I'm, I, I wonder if they put a lot of thought into having to redownload a lot of stuff frequently. Yeah. And I'm curious if, you know, maybe they're pushing for games to be lightweight and just do on the fly downloading. So, you know, you're so close to press. the end of one level. TV letterpress. Yeah. Is, is, um, is there ever going to be Flappy Bird or a Flappy Bird clone for, for TV? Have you guys heard anything about that? I haven't of heard of it, but there will be, but it hopefully it won't be more than 200 megs. Yeah. I, I kind of want to make a really, so first off, I kind of really want to make a tvOS app. And second, um, I totally want it to be like a Flappy Bird clone, like a, a really like stupid, low, you know, lo-fi well, um, Flappy Bird clone. You could make, do, it, um, do all your design in MS Paint. I right? was going to Almost suggest. Like, Making the uh, Flappy Bird bird, um, the old Apple TV remote on screen. So like the <laughs> old aluminum stick. That would be amazing. Uh, yeah, I was totally thinking of doing like pixel art for it, but yeah, I think yeah. that that kind of takes the cake, right? Because well, because you could probably use the asset. So yeah. of course, that would never make it through app review, but it would be hilarious to do on a local like. Well, I mean, machine. you know, you could have it. Uh, I mean, I don't know. You could make uh, various remotes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Too good. Oh, iconic remotes is. At the least, yeah. you could record a video or a GIF of it, put it on Twitter, become Twitter famous for a day or two. Right. That's kind of that's kind of what I'm thinking. Wow. Well, <laughs> I'm not thinking of the Twitter famous part, but I'm thinking that it would be fun, even if it's just like a proof of concept thing. But yeah. first, I have to learn how the heck to write a TVOS app. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. I've I've got the SDKs downloaded. Hey, so that'll Swift, be, that'll be fun. good stuff. My goal for the spring is to do iOS or something. So maybe I, I'll join you like next year, if I'm all right. As well, sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah, and then you can both fly to WWDC to have all of the new APIs unlocked for you. That would be so Yay. fun. Oh, someday, someday. Yeah, I I made the probably stupid decision of tying my my apple developer connection membership essentially to dub dub mm. because so like around the time that that stuff is announced is when my membership expires so if i if i miss it i'm gonna have to renew early which i guess isn't that big of a deal but it's just kind of like if i don't think about it or if my brain's not there how could it not be there because it's wwdc season yeah but if if on the off chance like i don't know if yeah. in the off chance you go to the Microsoft Build Conference the week before, yeah, yeah, and then it took it took me twenty seconds to realize what dub dub meant. Yeah, that was <laughs> is that a thing? I don't know. A somebody somebody I work with calls it dub dub. I think it's once, but yeah. yeah, I haven't heard of that before. No, it's funny. But hey, this, also the semester started. How's that been going for you guys? Uh, it's pretty and good. Also, Brian, you're in Denmark. I am, yeah. Um, it's been going well. I've had uh, three and a half weeks of class, although last, this last week was a core course week, so I had like a scavenger hunt, some guest lectures and things on last Monday, Tuesday. I had Wednesday off. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I went to Ehu, a island uh, south of Fyn, which is the central middle island in Denmark. So, yeah, nice. So small town, three-hour... Through our drive, our ferry away. It was nice. Saw some sustainability cool. stuff. Um, cool. Yeah, I like Denmark a lot. I think Brilliant. it's easy adjustment to be here. I've been here before, and I know a little Danish, so. Yeah. It's good. Now, well, your, tw your Twitter feed's definitely been fun to watch over this time, and yeah. 
I kind of for, I forget about it for a few days, and then I remember about it, and it's like, all right, did it? Well, don't worry. We will follow your weather bot, and it'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. and now now that it doesn't tweet comma space colon anymore, <laughs> I, I I can't believe it took me three weeks to finally get around to fixing that. I okay. totally had time. I just kind of put it off, and then uh, it'll come back to bite me. And then I and then I. So I realized the reason more seven weather wasn't working was because Heroku had shut shut off my free account because it was still working for a little while when I got here before switching to the hobby style. So mm. 24 hour day versus 18. And so it switched off and I wanted to see if I could still keep it because I would go to the dashboard and look at my plan and it would still say free, but I couldn't turn on the toggle to start it. It was oh. like grayed out, but it, wasn't very clear so i had to go yeah. change it to hobby and then it started up just fine nice but it was still down yeah. for three weeks yeah the way that that stuff works is so the, the way that heroku works like that is kind of i know why they do it it makes a ton of sense but it's it's kind of frustrating because i just want it for free mm-hmm. <laughs> like you know right like I, I know that they i know why they do that free dino thing but it's like I've got, I think I've got an app that's on the Cedar 10 stack. And in fact, I should probably check and see if that website's still up. Um, not that it really matters a whole lot because it just points to my new website, but um, my new old website that you all know. Um, but johnsonamend.org is the one that, that is running off of, or that was at one point running off of Heroku. And it looks like that might be, uh, oh, nope, still up. That's surprising. I wonder if I'm just cached. Uh, but it's, it's so weird to see like the, um, the like tr- the way that they transition that just seems weird. I mean, but I will say my 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 website, a web worker, transitioned automatically just fine. It didn't. I think it's on the hobby style, but it had no problems. It's when I had a worker one. It oh, because gotcha. that's what my Twitter bots are. I mean, maybe they yeah, yeah. maybe they expect the worker ones to be interruptible more so than the website. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I would say even less interruptible because they're, it's like a worker, a backend thing that always has to be up, whereas the right. web could, I don't know. Yeah, you think that the that the web one would be the one that that they would assume could be like way interruptible because because it should be the worker dyno should be feeding the web dyno. You you think right? Yeah. So I don't know if so I would that, necessarily think that. Not this, but I would I would say a backend is is a higher priority service for yeah. The general market. I don't know. Maybe. Ask Haruko. Anyway, they probably know. The web one transitioned seamlessly. The worker one did not. I mean, but now that it is apparently 18 hours a day, I don't even know. I don't keep track of how often they tweet. I should look. Maybe it falls during the daytime. Maybe it doesn't. Yeah. Okay. Morris one, two, five, ten, ten. Um, okay. I need to do the non Morris one so I can at least track the time. Um, yeah. Okay, it tweeted at 10, it tweeted at 6, it tweeted at 3, it tweeted at 1, tweeted at noon, it tweeted at 7, and 6. Brandon, did we lose you? Mm. I think I'm back. There we go. Sorry about that. Yeah, hi. So, well, in the last 24 hours, it didn't seem like a single tweet got skipped that was supposed to be tweeted for nice. the Morris one. So maybe it just fell during the night. I don't know. Because there is, unless a special event happens, between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m., it doesn't necessarily need to tweet. Mm-hmm. Nice. Well, that's really cool that you're able to get that set up in a way that works, like, really well. Yeah, it, it definitely seems pretty pretty darn near seamless. Yeah, I'm pretty. I'm pretty happy with it. Although I will say there was one tweet. I don't know if you guys saw it, where it mm-hmm. encountered some error, and my error case went through and published, which I think is kind of when we find the URL. I think I know why it aired out though. Um, I'll put it in Slack here. Um, so I the last tweet I tweeted before that tweet was on a bridge over a body of water, and it was the dead center of the bridge because I was tweeting about being on the center of this tall bridge. And so it wasn't on anywhere, any like probably near a weatherable location. That's what my assumption is. I haven't looked at the logs. I probably won't fix it. Let's happens again. But 
I like it. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's too awesome. And that's that that case is only only goes when Yahoo returns an error for the weather. Uh-huh. So that's the weather code is 32,000, 3,200 or something rather than one to 40, which is your weather condition. So like snow or something. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Mm-hmm. So what's yeah. up for next week for you guys? Um, let me see. My Sunday is free. Nice, nice. So I can probably do PodKit again then. Although I, I should talk to my parents at some point too. Gotcha. But I can probably work around PodKit. Well, you know where to find me. So probably like probably eight o'clock my time. So one o'clock your time would work if that works for you guys. But that's middle of the day too. So I'll be here. Yeah, I'll be I'll be here as well. This weekend was just way weird because I was out in the middle of nowhere, pretending to be a journalist and also getting kidnapped. You know, those, in quotes. The, the, oh, so it's quotes again, huh? Mm, sure. Yeah, it's, it's the scare scare quotes kidnapping mm-hmm. sort of thing. So it, it was the sort of thing where they wouldn't actually let us like report or journalize, as it were. I know. In in, in yeah, in in the UN, uh, you know what what is it like? List of the Declaration of of Civil Rights. It's like journalists must be allowed to journalize. That's it. Of yeah, course. that's number one, of yeah. course. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so my civil rights were being uh, violated for the sim- mm-hmm. simulation. And that's okay, because that's what the simulation is for. But it's kind of kind of sucked, because during it, my phone died. And I was like, no. But, did you not have your battery charger? See, I did, but uh, it took another hour before I was able to get back at base. And by then, they were like, oh, cool, simulation over, time to go home. Uh-huh. But it was real. It was really, it was really kind of a, a cool deal. There is one other thing I want to show you guys. I'll probably show it to you off list too. Um, this, uh, there's a GitHub project that I've been working on. I, I don't know. I don't think you guys follow me on GitHub, and that's a okay because I think I do. You, I, it's your maybe you do. Account. I don't it's even know how to use account. GitHub. That's why. So there's a there's something I've been working on a while. You guys might get a kick out of it. Uh, let me put it in Slack because that should be probably the easier one but uh i was working on a tutorial actually for how to uh build like a voice survey app uh using the spark framework for java Hmm. so that's been kind of uh a really awesome thing that has been going on and it's uh twilio picked it up and there it's a it's a thing it's on the interwebs and you can look at it and stuff best place to be the internet is the best place to be. I like hanging out here. It's pretty How nice. How about you, Ryan? Uh, I've been um, around. Uh, last nice. weekend, we went to uh, th- South Dakota. Um, yeah, it's how your photos. The Wyoming Both area. Uh, I really want to do that trip again. It, it was a lot of fun. Um, driving, a lot of driving, way too much driving. Yeah, okay. Uh, we, w- we really wanted to go to Yellowstone, but it's an extra eight hours after... Uh, rapid city and we would still would have had to either stay there or drive back eventually so uh we didn't just stay there uh and then on friday to saturday i went camping so that was fun brilliant yeah and um for developmenty things i've been working with a framework called Vue.js. nice nice it's uh it's kind of similar to angular it's pretty cool i like it brilliant yeah, I think I remember seeing your tweet about it. Um, yeah, I tweet funny. It's, uh, it's another MVVM sort of. Th- oh yeah, yep. that's Angular like. Yeah, quite cool. Quite, quite cool. Oh, you're using uh, Java 1.8, huh? Ooh. You betcha. Nice. No. Uh, yeah, uh, move move fast and break things or something. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> also, use features that nobody knows how to use. Yeah. Have you used Node Node 4 yet? I. Node four, oh lordy, I missed out on a ton, didn't I? I I'm still on I'm still on twelve, uh, you know, zero dot twelve. They're on four. They, they jumped from well because they merged with IOJS, right. yeah. And their the transitioned version was IOJS three. It wasn't official Node, so and Node twelve apparently was version two, maybe. Okay. 
Okay. Anyway, three was like a test trial between merging two, and then four is out now with a newer version of, I think it's V8 version 4.6. Okay. Well, I hope you weren't relying on Simver because that went out the window. Well, no, now now they're using Simver. Sure they are. It's, (laughs) yeah, Simver recalibrated starting now. (laughs) Well... You can't quite say Simper when the the main version is has been zero in the entire project's existence. Yeah, that's I mean true. you could. I mean everybody just agreed that if you screw up this API, then nobody will use it ever again. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to pull that stuff down and start playing around with it because yeah. Um, I am I am doing 2021 this semester, 2011 and 2021. But now you're gonna have, gonna have to translate yeah. that to words because I don't remember any of the numbers. Oh yeah, that's right. They they renumbered all the courses and stuff. Yeah. So. Um, I think one is discrete, discrete structures or discrete math. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So the the logicy thing yeah. with um, with the professor. Who, who's who your professor? Talks about logicy stuff. I think it's James Moen. Okay. I had it with yeah. uh, Philip Barry. Yeah, James James Moen seems like a good guy. Professor Moen seems like a good guy. And then of course it's um, uh, Devolis for um, machine architecture. Oh yeah, he's still be, doing stuff. Which okay. is going to be freaking amazing. Like, it's a it's a hard class, but I I enjoy it a lot. Yeah, I'm like we're already doing some stuff with C, and oh. at first I was like, oh my gosh, are you, how's, how's is it? Going? Um, but, are you gonna do uh like a number conversion or something base conversion? I think that's I think that's the first lab. Yeah. So I am way looking forward to it, but I have absolutely no concept of the due dates because I just like I feel like I just came home from like I don't know a month of stuff being in a coma or something. Yeah. I'm way way out of touch with everything that happened. Yeah, I, was, was, I went camping for a night and a half, and I feel the same way. Yeah, I bet. I bet. Yeah, like any travel, it just throws your whole system off yeah. so much. Mm-hmm. Who even knows what tomorrow will be like, right? And I'm, tomorrow I'll probably be right back, just as though nothing had ever happened. And uh, yeah. you have to believe in it. Yeah, and then I'll forget about all the all the stuff I need to write a paper about for e- next e- day. Exactly. <laughs> so. <laughs> No, but that's okay. Yeah, but I, I totally missed that. That Well, I remember hearing that Node and IOJS were going to merge. Yep. But I don't remember. I didn't know that that was happening so quickly and that it would have such a drastic change for, well, drastic versioning, marketing change. But it's that's that's awesome. That's really yeah. way cool. You need to get on your R web dev. Oh, yeah, that's right. I should probably That's where I see most of that kind of stuff. Yeah, I think I see stuff there too. I don't know. I feel like someone. I follow like one or two people who use Node on Twitter. Most of it's all Apple though, which is a little, a lot of the same. But oh, okay, uh, Brandon, I want to ask you about your Apple Watch. I'm yeah. just moving the lights so I can see. So I tweeted a photo about this. I, I think I did. I just took a photo. So my, uh-huh. um, let me actually just find this. I think it's a tweet. So uh-huh. was yours not even on? Well. I've- I didn't bring it with me to the to the wilderness of uh, Cannon Falls or whatever. Good but, idea. Okay. At first, I was like, "Oh, that alarm! I'm gonna totally miss that alarm." But nah. The 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 birds and the Cub Scouts shooting ducks um, did did that just fine. So. Okay, I just I'm sending you a link to the tweet so mm-hmm. you can see a photo. But uh, apparently, this has been kind of common. I've seen in the our Apple Watch subreddit. So the Apple logo on the back of the aluminum ones has been scratching off. So oh. you can see in the photo, there's no longer, it's just the top of the logo, the, the leaf and the little bit of the upper right bite and the upper left Apple yeah. mound. And it's just straight aluminum underneath. So apparently that's been happening to people. Hmm. Is it only on the black ones? Or I, I guess it would make sense that it would like the space gray or space black. I don't remember. Is it space black or space gray? I don't recall the sports. Sports uh, is black, right? Maybe. I don't remember actually. Oh, I need to clean this. I haven't washed it with water in forever. I mean, what a, what a terrible place for it to chip off or break off. Yeah, of all the places, the Apple logo, right? Yeah. I think it it looks like mine's still there. Yeah, yours, yeah, is, yours still is, there. is fine. Yeah, mine yeah. is. Well, my my, mine doesn't look right. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, my watch is fine. I haven't scratched mine yet. Have you? Do you have any big nope. scratches on it? Uh, not that I can, not that I can tell, at least. But 
yeah, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm really like enjoying it. And I've been starting to run a little bit more frequently and oh my gosh, it's huge for that. Even if I'm not tying it to my G GPS, it's like huge because really what I'm looking for is basically, um, is like the heart rate sort of thing. And then yeah. maybe if not, if not the heart rate sort of thing, then perhaps like, um, then, then at least like the duration, right. And it can make a good guess at miles. So it's, it seems like it's a pretty, pretty darn robust thing for that, which I, I had kind of always known, but it's definitely been showing up more now that I've been like out there running and stuff more. Yeah. I, I biked to classes and there, there was one time I biked nearly to school. I went to a, a little cafe that had board games and yeah. I, I had on a workout to bike there. And then I sat there for an hour and a half before realizing I saw this workout going. So it's like, oh, great, another 550 calories burned that I, you know, it was maybe a 120 calorie bike ride. I'm like, <laughs> Ugh. so I've, I've had a couple days where I've hit, I think I've hit the um, move goal of 400% once or nice. twice. I don't know. Oh, I basically so cool. kind of, Living in this large city that's not Morris helps a lot with moving more and like biking and mm -hmm. not just walking two seconds to get to class. I've 400 percent it once, 300 percent three times. Nice. My move goals 400 calories, 200 percent it 17 times. So many days I'd, four, I'd at least 200 percent it here. That's so brilliant. What's your move goal at? Um, my move goal I think is at 330. I think that's pretty arbitrary. I haven't I haven't changed it. I don't think since the day I bought it, but um, I've been I've been hitting pretty consistently four hundred percent on days that I've been running or biking. Like, oh my gosh, I, I biked from uh, uptown to Stillwater. Uh, oh wow! Over wow. Labor Day weekend. That's a, how many calories was that? Uh, I think. Oh, let me see if I can grab my phone quick. Um, I believe that was somewhere in the vicinity of uh, two thousand mm -hmm. flat. I could be, I could be wrong though. Uh, but it's kind of funny because I, I had actually, um, I was like, why is this so, you know, what, why is this so, um, yeah, 2,457 calories. Wow. So that was, I was like, why, why am I so like, um, tired on this bike ride? Um, you know, and, and the, I was riding with uh, somebody I work with and, and he had this like, this, pretty darn heavy like cruiser style bike you know so kind of you, your your handlebars are up above your head and oh wow um, okay and and he was like he was going just fine he was able to maintain basically like 12 miles per hour just fine and i'm like dude I'm, I'm on a road bike like what is what is going on here um and it turns out that i was somewhere in the vicinity of 100 psi below the, oh. the minimum recommended uh tire weight and i i i thought to check it probably like 15 times but um, but I never did because I was just like, time to get going, right? You know, mm -hmm. like when, when you're that far behind, it's it's almost like no time to stop. Better better keep going. But if I would have, I would have stopped at some point with that tires hour were ride, super flat and just rolling on. Yeah. Well, yeah, that'll yeah, that'll make a huge shift, I guess. Yeah, it's a pretty. Uh, it was a pretty stupid. It was pretty darn stupid of me not to. Not to refill the tires, but I mean, whatever. Less but now you're set for the rest of your life, and you won't make that. <laughs> exactly. Until right. next See, week. Until next week. Yeah. See, I'd never had that problem before, you know. And I, I could have swore I just, I just filled it up last week. But I've probably been thinking that for the past six weeks straight, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Who knows? But it's fun stuff. Are Are you in? Um. So have you been? Flash, are you spending time in Copenhagen on like the Copenhagen bikeways? Because I've heard that those are just like amazing. Yeah, I, I bike on uh, one of the main streets, at least I'm on Ama, this island south of the main Shetland island that has most of Copenhagen on it. And there's yeah, one street that is kind of a main thoroughfare that comes off of where I'm from. It'll take that into town. So yeah, there's, but basically any street that's not a small street, it's going to have a bike lane on it. Oh, that's fantastic. But whenever there's a traffic light, it has its own light for bikers, including oh like right-hand turns and things. And so it's super nice. And there are some bikeways that are wider, so you can have like two people bike next to each other when they're talking, and at least one or two people can pass. And so it's, it's, it's really nice. Fantastic. And they sometimes share a lane with buses. There's, you know, if, if they share with buses, it's 
the bike lane width plus the bus, but you know, you can kind of use it more and the only mm-hmm. buses are allowed there. And so it's, it is really cool. I think, I think it's in Copenhagen, a little over 50% of people bike to work or school or wherever they're going every day. Yeah. I think you sh- yeah. showed us those stats the other week, month. And the Twitter. next is public transportation and then driving. Driving in the city is horrible. I don't ever want to drive here. It's just, you can't, uh, no, don't even, don't even think about it. Mm-hmm. I bet. Park in, park in a suburb and take public transportation. In. Yeah. Ah, oh, well, that sounds awesome. I, I know we've only probably just heard, you know, not, not even the half of it about what's, what's going on for you over there, but it's, that's awesome. It's been really cool to follow your adventures. Oh, I need to, I need to try and tweet more. I kind of forget. <laughs> like, hey, I don't no worries, know. man. You can you li- live it first and tweet, tweet later if you gotta live it first. True, true. Cause your weather will treat for you. Exactly. <laughs> True. My my tech account after the Apple event has been mostly retweets of interesting things. Mm-hmm. And then my main account, I tweeted a little bit today. Mm-hmm. And then like Instagram cross posts. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, also, Brandon, what about your watch band? Because mine is showing signs of wear. Yeah. Uh, good question. Mine is, I think pretty near just fine i was a little bit concerned i remember like a while back you you had mentioned that it would kind of get you know almost like a sandblasted feel to it but mine still feels pretty close to the to the day i bought it and i do recall that like the the the, the space gray or space black sport watches were felt softer from the beginning so mm-hmm. perhaps what's what's happening is your watches is getting closer and closer to the beginning state of mine <laughs> um so that that might be part of it too but I do think that um, it's, you know, I'm, I'm pretty surprised considering it's a white watch band and it's just got that, you know, this, this kind of silver coating um, on the aluminum. It's, it's holding up pretty well, especially like, ugh. I don't know how well you guys know the roads that, that lead to Stillwater, but I was biking on 96 for a lot of the time mm. um, heading back up to Hugo. Cause I was, I was not going to bike all the way back to, to Minneapolis on 25 PSI. Yeah. <laughs> um, Oh yeah, it's really bad. Yeah, so we we went went out back back towards the Washington County sphere, the northern part of the Washington County sphere, and um, I you know we were getting sandblasted by you know essentially sandblasted by semi trucks and um. You know, Are you just on the side of the highway or what? Yeah, yeah, just on the shoulder. Okay. Yeah, Is that's that a, that's a tough tough ride. Yeah, it's so it's it's not like a trunk highway like sixty one is, or it's it's certainly not a freeway like thirty five. Um, it's kind of, it's like a state, state, um, roadway, which is to say that it's managed by the county, which is to say that I'm at least 80% sure it's legal. Google Maps put me there. So. <laughs> oh, okay. I'll, then you're probably I'll, okay. Yeah. I'll blame Larry and Sergey if, if, uh, no, you, you <laughs> sorry, can't blame, Alfred. yeah, you can't blame them now. You got to blame, uh, Sundar. Yeah. No, I can't blame Sundar. He's, he's such a nice guy. I know. I'll blame it all on Eric Schmidt. There we go. Yeah, that's we can all good. agree on that. Yeah, right? no, nobody yeah. likes him. But yeah. Brandon, I was asking about the bands because mine, my, you know, mine has, still shows where where it's on the 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 I use two um, holes more often than anything else, and so those underneath on this portion of the band shows yeah. a little more than I don't know if you can see more than the other ones, but at the same time, there's also some. Uh, let me try and adjust light here. I don't know if you can tell, but there's some ob- more obvious wear there. This light is way too bright. Yeah. I do I see know. like a, a so, little bit of, of the fluoroelastomer kind of on the, on the pin, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm seeing that too. So there's, and, uh, I don't know, maybe I haven't like washed this in quite a while, but I'm rubbing my hands on it and it's like almost like an eraser. Some is coming off. That might just be like grime that's accumulated i should have watched yeah. this and then talk but <laughs> no yeah but yeah it's i don't know i might i think i'll get a new band at some point in the next year maybe yeah. before maybe at the one year anniversary i will i bought myself yeah. um one of the new saddle brown leather cases for my iphone 6 on Ooh, just, nice like Right after the Apple event, I'm like, all right, I need a new case because my 
this is my red silicone one and it's the second one i got it got my first one replaced after a month or two because it was wearing and showing signs and i managed to convince the store rep to give me a free one yeah but on this one now on this top corner i can i can see and feel the plastic underneath the silicone coming through uh-huh and so it's just it's getting worn out every time i put it in my pocket just a little bit wears away and same on the bottom corners it's starting to there's like a little hole developing and the plastic is showing through and so it's and it just feels like it's been worn down so uh uh-huh. I'm getting a leather one. It was, I bought it in the the Danish Apple store and it was a converted fifty seven dollars. Nice, so, not half bad. Uh, well, yeah, it's it's for sale for forty five in the U S dollars. Oh, plus really? Tax. Oh. Mm. In the end, it's probably that. only five dollars more. I don't know, fifty two dollars yeah. on forty five is probably about what it would be fifty, maybe fifty. So seven dollars yeah. more maybe isn't too bad. But yeah, then I can. True. I can pick it up on, I think it's coming on Wednesday. I can get it. Whereas if I bought it through the U S and waited for my parents to bring it, it'd be mid October. So, Oh gosh. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's also, you can also think of it as $7 shipping. So yeah. Right. right? Or yeah, that's $7. Or if, if you combine that across all your purchases, that's just like your fancy bike lane fee, right? Exactly. <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm I'm excited for that case. I think it looks like a good color and yeah. leather is going to last a bit longer than the silicone. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I love the leather case for my 5S um right here. So it's it's quite nice. That's the Apple one? Yeah, the Apple one. Yeah, I I really wish I bought that originally. I was feeling a little cheap and didn't want to spend the extra. I think it was $10 at that time, not 5. Yeah. I want to say they used to be or maybe even 20. I think they were $60 at first. Yeah, but then they brought them down to forty five at some point. And I didn't notice. Yeah, yeah, I know with the five S. Like th- these are the only cases you can get for it now. I-, I think there was at some point some silicone ones, but now, like I got this probably about six months ago, eight months ago, and the only kind you can get for the five S is just the the leather one. So, yeah. and, and it was something in the neighborhood of like twenty five dollars because of course the five S is an older model. Right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But now you got me looking at the extra bands for the watch, and I kind of want like, either the orange or red sport band. I kind of want like a like a one of the gray ones too. Oh, what's going on? Or this? Oh, there's there's like a kind of sandy brown color that I kind of like for some reason. Or just like an off white. Why? That that's if I actually I got any of those, that'd be ridiculously expensive. But okay there's the accessory stuff i can't find anything on the new apple site because they redesigned it and they don't have a store tab so it's just like uh. you don't need yeah. to find anything if you are if you are destined to purchase it you will find your way to the buy button yeah it would just present itself to you it present itself to you indeed gosh i i have to say i'm so darned excited for the apple tv for the new one are like, you going to get it Oh yeah, the one we have. I signed up for the dev program, so hopefully, nice. Um, yeah, hopefully that will result in things. Oh, um, but, sorry, I just realized there's an Apple Store in Malmö, Sweden, which is like fifteen dollar train ride away. That's that's maybe, awesome. Uh, it's Can fifteen dollars, which is a bit of expensive, but that's pr- relatively close. If I need yeah. to, get to, yeah, totally. Well, and it's it's such a um, well. I like trains, so that's like I'm like heck yeah trains. I, I like Bob. trains too. Trains are the best. You you've Before seen trains. the ASDF movie, right? I like uh, trains. I don't think I have seen that movie. But... Okay, okay, hold on. That that probably sounds really out of place. Um, here's okay. So this is a looks like a compilation video of all of these I like train moments from a couple different YouTube videos that this guy made makes thanks for the link <laughs> oh my gosh it's me <laughs> oh that's too good that's too good too darn good no but yeah that's that's super cool I think you're very right they made some very strange information architecture decisions by removing the store but 
who knows? Maybe we'll see a swap back to that eventually. Maybe we won't. Maybe, maybe it's just Eddie Q being Eddie Q and Phil Schiller being Phil Schiller. Yeah, who knows? Yeah, it's, it says that the shopping bag in the top right rather than a cart. I think that's a smart thing, but... We don't put Apple stuff in carts. We put it <laughs> yeah, in exactly. a luxury bag for you. Handcrafted out of a single block of aluminium. And it was only made in the whitest room on the planet. Ah, <laughs> uh, there's some sort of a country music joke there. But I can't bring myself to make it. <laughs> so, Brenda, what what band did you say you were going to get? If one, of, I'm I'm probably going to be trash and get one of the another sport band, probably the red one, possibly the blue one, TBD. Um, yeah, I, I I'll definitely get a I'll get a sport. I don't think it's worth it enough to me to buy a more expensive band. Plus. The steel and aluminum contrast, I don't know if that would work very well. And yeah. if it's if it's steel on aluminum, it, they do corrode with each other yeah. over time. I still, I think I'm eyeing that green one. I think green would look nice. Yeah, but, uh, I I love the I love the blue and I love like the orange. The orange is like just red enough that it looks vaguely reddish. I, f- I found that a lot of Apple products that are orange. Well, are there yep. any other Apple products that are orange? Orange is the best color. Like that seems it seems like that's that's the closest to the kind of red that I'm looking for. Yeah. Um, I I like the orange but I think it's it's a little loud and that's why I'm going for green. I don't yeah. know. It is $50 though, so Yeah, yeah. right? But I realize at the same time if my black band gets worn out, I still have this the large band that I can use because oh, that, yeah. that fits my wrist as well. I'm in the middle so I like the small one on the small band, I use the um, second and third largest loops. And on the large band, I use the second and large smallest ones. So, mm. Yeah, I'm still, I, I have, I must have like a way tiny wrist because my, um, on my watch, I think I'm on like the second or third smallest loop. Yeah, third smallest loop on the. Um, All right, I'm putting mine on. We're going to see if this, how this fits. Yeah, so I guess that's the fourth or fifth. It's the it's the fifth um, the fifth from the largest, so I I don't think I could possibly use the um, the larger band, but somebody could. My my so, dad also has an app. Mm-hmm. I I can get the um the middle one, so there are three unused ones on each side. But any tighter than that, I've never ever worn it at this at this yeah. one before. But like it does fit. It's just pretty tight. I uh-huh. use I use the the third largest one when I'm if I'm biking or doing activity cuz I know it's going to be kept closer but I feel like the last month or two especially it's it seems like the Apple Watch like it's it's expanded and it and I need to go a size smaller. Yeah. Yeah, I can I can definitely feel that too on my watch. It's kind of weird how that works, but I guess that's just floral elastomer being floral elastomer. Mm-hmm. I, I would imagine so. Or like late summer, do our wrists get a little smaller? Because I know that can be a thing too. Yeah, that's true. Never thought about the physiology of that, but that's interesting. I know some Apple Store guy was talking to me about that when I was there getting Apple Care. May. Gotcha. Well, you should go to the Apple Store and talk to them about the uh, Mac Mini that they don't believe exists. <laughs> I saw that on, on Reddit or something. Or, oh, oh good yeah. gosh! That's oh gosh. Yeah, I'm. I'll be in Malmo on. I'm seeing. I have a cousin who lives there. Uh, no, not that day. Not that day. What day am I going? You're already there, Brian. Oh. No, I'm kidding. totally kidding. Oh, okay, it was the right day. I just so I have a my mom's cousin is named Eva and my cousin's named Evan and it truncated it at E V A. So I only saw Eva, part of Evan, and so I Yeah, first, so. Man, that's that's just too perfect. On Saturday the twenty sixth I will be in Malibu, so maybe I can head over. Nice. Um, everything yeah. here closes at like seven. So pretty really? early. Yeah. That's yeah. fascinating. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, like, the only place that really seemed like that in the U.S. has got to be, like, New York. New York, like, the Apple store closed way early, like... Because in the U.S., everything's, like, 9 or 10. Yeah, I think, I think, I think when I was in New York, the, the, you know, what do they call it? The flagship one, the glass box, and kind of in Midtown. Isn't um, that 24 hours? Uh... I think it used to be, at least. When I, when I was there, it closed around 8. Okay. But... I, I think you now now that you say that I feel like I remember hearing that it was 24 hours too which is why like I think so if you have to I, I I should probably preface this by saying it was almost 10 years ago I think or at least five or six years ago that I that I went to New York and and did this but we arrived at around 11 and our hotel was you know pretty pretty a pretty big jaunt away from there but it was close enough that we walked down there just to see the 24 7 Apple store but it it wasn't it wasn't open I'm like hmm. Because I'm I'm on their Fifth Avenue store site now. It says twenty four seven three sixty five a year. So, hey, that's awesome. I guess it's changed. Upgrades. Yeah. Maybe maybe they changed it when they got the new glass. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That could be it. Makes sense. So what I was thinking is, since we didn't have a podkit, technically, that this fringe here would kind of just become podkit. That'd be okay yeah, with me. I think we'd make a podkit. Yeah, I was I was thinking about suggesting that earlier. What's the um I need to pull up our podkit doc from the one that I closed that was supposed to be for podkit. If there's any other fringe notes that I was I going I, to I say. don't know. You'll find it both in the same folder. It's complicated. There's a folder for Google Docs. Yeah. I don't know. Here, here, I'll I send just, you a link. Hold on, hold on. Just I do believe we do have a folder, but I don't Wait, know. Wait, maybe I'm I might be a part of it. I just don't use Google Drive ever on my non-school account. Uh-huh. That might be what it's going on. Oh, great. Google Photos. Okay, I see. I see stuff. Cool. I will add that in a minute. Um, yeah. Do you want me to talk about a couple more things? Yeah, oh, totally up to you. But I'll just keep going. If you want. Up whatever I, you like. The longest sure. pod kid in the world. <laughs> How long is this? Episode? I have no, I have no idea. Here, hold on. Here, hold on. so <laughs> where is your timer for the end of the Nexus special? Heather? Well, okay, so Negative. yeah, so it's it's we're an hour and sixteen minutes over our one minute previously over. Okay, no, I thought we were twenty minutes over. Well, yes, right. Okay, yeah, we're probably at about forty-five minutes right now. Uh, I think. It's a long time. How about that? Maybe I don't know. <laughs> I'm just going to briefly go through how my phone works here because it's pretty cool. Yeah, so totally. I, I got to Denmark. I was in airplane mode and just kind of hobble around on Wi-Fi for two days. And that was enough to drive me crazy. So I, I, I said, screw it to signing up online to get a free SIM card in the mail after like a week. And I walked to the store and spent probably like – uh, let me just do the calculation. Seven dollars and sixty cents on a SIM card, and the equivalent of a dollar fifty-two of credit, and got the SIM card, put it in my phone, and that dollar fifty-two lasted me with data until maybe eight thirty a.m. the next morning because <laughs> I used data, of course. And, you know, I loaded Twitter a few times and it went away. But then that afternoon I bought, I went to just, they have 7-Elevens everywhere here. And yeah. I went to one and bought it, this little, it was, they just gave me a receipt that had some codes on it that I called yep. in and punched in. It was just under $20 and I got 10 hours of calling, unlimited texts within Denmark and um, four gigabytes of data for like $20. Right. Great. And then I got a text Two weeks ago, I think it was about saying they're changing their plans, and the one I'm on now gets 15 gigabytes of data per month for the same about twenty dollars. Score. Why can't, why can't we have that here? Yeah, right. Oh, that sounds amazing. That, that three in the UK was about uh, was pretty similar. More expensive, but pretty similar in, in the mechanics of it. So you go to basically a Tesco or a Seven Eleven, and you get the codes. But that's that's such an awesome deal. Like that's yeah. that's really cool. And then I, I've set up online and put my credit card on so it can auto renew and things. Nice. Do they, you do, that with, do they let you do that with a US card? Mm-hmm. Nice. Yep. Oh, I have about cool. I have about 
$35 sitting on the account that have already been charged for my credit card waiting for the next one. But, and then um, that's you can do all that without a Danish CPR number, which is about the equivalent of a social security number. Yeah. So, But permanent residents and things get that, not just citizens. Gotcha. Gotcha. If that's how it works in the U.S., I don't really know. So, I, but once I yeah. once I get that number, I think in a week I will be able to do roaming internationally. So I'm going to Norway for six days in two weeks, and I will do some roaming there probably. Just a little data nice. here, and, there. and it's um, let me use my nifty unit conversion. I think it's like. Um, 20, 25, 28, 30 cents per megabyte to do in rubbing. So that's enough to get by, but not like a great deal. Yeah, understood. Understood. So, yeah. And Super of course, cool. you know, it's this little this little network that hops off of a larger network, Telenor. Yeah. So, yeah, it works out. Apparently, I'm supposed to get... 4G, but it just says 3G on my iPhone. I don't yeah. know if it works though, so it's okay. Totally. So yay phone, it worked pretty well. I I've had no. It sometimes will just go to no service and then picks up another tower again. So it's it's tower to tower travel isn't maybe the best, but that's okay. Uh -huh. uh, just a couple other notes. I had EU cookie policy. So every website here has a little banner that comes up saying we have cookie policy. Close this little pop up. I like every site if I go yeah. to it the first time. And so, of course, they save a cookie because I went to there to close their cookie thing. So it's just like, uh, I just feel the bloat. Just, ugh. Yeah, right? I mean, we sometimes see that on, on you know, especially the thing that I'm thinking of is like like British sites here. Like if you go to the BBC, they'll have that. Yeah. Yeah, um, but on every on every darn website, that's a little bit ludicrous. But not I guess, every, but it seems like every. Yeah, yeah. At least a new, a new visit, like new sites and everything. So there's there's this one. I was looking up stuff for the A nine, and the message comes up saying, "We have a cookie policy," and I could, or I think it was cookie, or maybe it was something else. Yeah, it was cookie policy. I could close the little pop up window thing, or I could check a box saying. Don't remind me for a week. Yeah. And it's just like, uh, stop it. Well, you could write your care. own, uh, you could write your own, um, like, uh, grease monkey plugin to strip yeah, cookie the cookie accepter. policy out. Yeah. Yeah. I should look. There's probably something out there. But. Probably. But I bet you could do it better. Wouldn't, was, isn't that kind of funny? Like, you know, everybody uses Ghostry or NoScript or, or uBlock. But but Ryan wants to accept the cookies, not block them. <laughs> yeah, I would just, yeah. just give them all to me. I'll you know, I'll, I'll clear my cookies. Probably never, but I have forty six hundred and forty five websites with stored cookies or other data. Is that a lot? I don't use oh, an ad blocker, so that's yeah. probably not helping. Yeah, I don't, I don't either. I've got a relatively similar number, somewhere in the neighborhood of five hundred, but I. Yeah, I, I clear my cookies and cash pretty frequently, but I haven't for some time now. How do you people live without an ad blocker? Um, Mark does a good enough job for me to stop flash ads from playing. Well, yep. I guess that's half the battle, yeah. Yeah. Um, you just kind of ignore them. I'm just wait. I'm just waiting till September 26th, no, 9th, when El Capitan comes out. No, 26th. Yep. I think it was a Saturday, right? Yeah, the 26th, when El Capitan comes out, when I can get Safari 9 and WebKit ad blocking, content blocking, because it'll be so much better. Yeah, the public Because it's, no, no, right. it's no performance, well, probably a little, but not really any performance loss. Yeah. Which is Absolutely. what I'm more worried about. So, um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, LCAP is, is quite fun. I've got the public beta running on one of my machines right now. Nice. And yeah, when it comes out, we will have words to say, many words. Yeah. So is my poor I, MacBook Air going to be able to upgrade? Yeah. Okay. My my 2008 MacBook will get it. Wow. Ugh, somehow. It just don't, don't run anything newer than like Snow Leopard on that thing, though. It just, it doesn't get good performance after that, really. 
but oh well. And then I have one more quick comment. So there's a guy on my floor who's studying for his master's in computer science. I think he's 26 or something. He's a nice guy. But he was talking about buying a domain for a blog he wants to start. And so he found the website that was available at the time, sin.tax oh, for syntax. Oh, my gosh. I, I don't know if I've ever heard a better one. That yeah, was that's pretty great. Oh. So I'm like, you need to buy that. I almost I almost considered just saying, hey, can I buy that? He's it was super cheap, you know, probably like eight or ten dollars. Yeah. Right. And so he goes back maybe half a week later, and once you know that um, the domain shark domain name sales corp bought it, and I can't buy it anymore. Yep. Oh, and th- their private policy, I was looking to because you have to enter in a name and email, and maybe even a phone number to um, request a quote for that that domain. They they use your contact information for third party marketing information, mm-hmm. which means you sign up for spam lists and your life is over. So oh, how fun! Yeah, me and him were hating on domain sharks. That is such a shame. And... That's such a good URL domain. Oh yeah, so good. Yeah. Domain sharks are not bay. No, no, but. So he he then he flipped it on me saying, "It's okay, my backup is you better dot run." Okay. <laughs> Which I'm like, whoa, okay. That that's pretty good though. That's good yeah. too. It, it works. So speaking of dom- domain names and uh, well, Google too. How about this alphabet thing? Oh, alphabet. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I like the domain name. It's pretty nice. As, yeah, as somebody who also holds a .xyz domain name, I'm kind of I'm kind of cool with that. They did. Yep, I'm a I'm a .xyz domain hipster. That's for sure. <laughs> but it's yeah. I mean, like the you know, it's it seemed like it was just like a pretty classy move of Google to to handle uh, that kind of demerger the way they did. Yeah, I think but, better, um, good restructuring. So there's. I think more of a focus across different departments and sub companies and things. And then some people who are doing a good job can be promoted a little higher, I think. Yeah, definitely. It seemed like it was good. And then of course there's probably tax reasons and a lot of money there too, but I think also yeah. it'll be a cool thing. Totally. Yeah. It'll be I'm interesting be- to uh, see. Well, one of the things people have talked about is, you know, they have their robots division, they have their, you know, robot car division, they have, all of their yeah. moonshot divisions. They have their flying internet division, you know, the the Boons Project Loon. And it'll be interesting to see if a non Google thing, so not Android, not search, not YouTube, a non Google thing becomes successful enough where they actually have to flesh a new brand out. So, right, you know, if they're like the if target they're, syndrome, yeah. right. So if their if their cars actually become successful enough, they're not going to call them Google Cars because that was the whole point of this demerging debranding thing so what new brand will they come up with under alphabet but complementing google it'll be really interesting to see that yeah so. totally oh well, it, it, you know i one of the things that i first thought of is like this is totally going to be like a dayton's target situation so you know dayton's begat yep. target as it were and then target becomes the more powerful one and takes over everybody else and it becomes target incorporated sells off the the original family shop to Macy's and, and that's that. Yep. Um, but I, one part of me can't see how that would happen to Google, but another part of me is like, if they're you know, both child companies to alphabet, it should be okay. And you know, maybe, maybe they, they, they they think they're close and they see that coming. I so, wonder. Because I, I think, you know, everyone's been talking about, okay, that sounds, there's been a lot of talk about how yeah. self-driving cars are like the next big transportation revolution, really. Yeah. There was a thread on Reddit years. today that, that said there will be you know mass-produced self-driving cars by 2020, and everybody said that was ridiculously unfeasible. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see what happens. I think – I don't know how well they work in rain or snow, though, so it might be more southern region, regions that have it. Yeah. I think they work just as well see. as a person does in <laughs> rain or snow, which is to say, not that great. Yeah, that's, that's so, fair. I, I still think we have a long way to go. Yeah, and the other trick is that is, you know, kind of idiomatic in the situation is that people are 
um, that, you know, they say that people are the problem with self-driving cars because people don't slow down, people don't stop when they see a self-driving car do something that's relatively reasonable or, you know, four-way stops are apparently, did you ever hear, I'll hear about that anecdote, how like at a four-way stop, the self-driving car freaks out because none of the human drivers stop, um, but they keep expecting a full stop. And yeah. So I mean, I can I can see there. how it would be. Oh, like the the rolling stop when yeah. there is yeah. a stop sign. Or, mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that's it's, just 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 more enhancements to software. Eventually, that they'll figure out. Yeah. I mean, I mean, once you know to look for something, you can put it in. Did you? There's yeah. an article I, I read about a story where there's a guy on a bike and at a with a Google car at an intersection, and the guy was rolling up obviously letting you know if it's a human he he wasn't stopping the bike because then he'd have to stop get off the bike and get on again to start uh, so he's doing, he's doing the a slow roll obviously letting the car go but the car didn't see that the bike was stopped so it wasn't going it so it would and the guy would look like he was about to stop so then it would inch forward but then he kept moving so it mm. stops just go inch inch and there were like two google engineers in the back just laughing and the biker was laughing and like they went halfway through the intersection just inch at a time kind of thing oh <laughs> it just sounds really funny yeah so i wonder sounds... yeah so like when you think of a self-driven car and man is this off topic or what um <laughs> <laughs> hey it's fun it's new technology it's that's yeah, cool. and this is, this is this is at least half fringe right here, sort I, of. I mean, and it sounds like you're in a car driving at sixty miles per hour, talking on your cell phone. So it's perfect. Yeah, gotta yeah. watch out for cars. Um, I we think, we uh, talked about um at the Nexus one time, really, really, really long ago, years and years ago. But I always imagined that, that there would be this multi-tiered system. You know, your your car would have, you know, of course, you'd have input zero, which would be you. Uh, so you could take oh. over if you really had to. There'd be input one, which would be the sensors and cameras on the car itself. There'd be input two, which would be the cars around the car and maybe sort of kind of the road, sort of, you know, markers, signs, that kind of stuff. And then there'd mm-hmm. be input three, which would be sort of like the cell network. And it would communicate broadly with multiple devices and cars throughout the area. And yeah. I always wondered how, because we don't have any of that yet. We have, we barely have input one done and input two is going to be hard and input three is going to be even harder absolutely i guess we'll just have to wait and see i think car manufacturers have been pushed to to rapidly develop and i think i think in the next you know 2020 maybe 2030 there's going to be a lot of progress made and you know it may not seem like a lot now but i think once something gets out there it's just going to start snowballing from there and, you know, uh-huh. five years goes down the line, then people start buying used cars with these features, and yep. it's just going to very, very quickly. I was reading um, that some perspective ideas for it would be something similar to Uber, if not Uber itself, that they would, you know, do the rollout of self-driving cars through a service similar to that. You know, you, mm-hmm. just, you just summon a car, and it will self-drive to you, and then self-drive you to somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, that's pretty that's, darn cool. That's what I keep hearing is the future. Hopefully, it just prices aren't priced like taxis are. Right. Yeah. Well, if there's enough of them. That lawsuit in New York where taxi company was suing Uber or or something about, and the the judge said, "Nope, you have to adapt for your uh, new competition." That was good. Yeah, I think it's okay. Yeah. I still haven't used Uber. Yeah, I don't have fifty dollars to spare, so I won't either. Yeah, certainly not Minneapolis. It's like in Minneapolis and St. Paul, it just seems kind of weird, though. Like they do have an office here, right? Like it, it yep. would theoretically be feasible for somebody to push the Uber button on an Apple Watch or whatever. Well, I, I have car. seen people using Lyft here in St. Paul. Really? Yeah. What oh, is, no, is Lyft just another competitor? Or? Lyft is the purple mustache, right? Yeah. Yes, yes. So there was a Lyft car. Yep. Yeah, That's Lyft so is weird. another competitor, just like Uber. You know, same idea. Hit a button on your app, get a car. Okay. Allegedly, what? they were doing better rates or something, you know, to sweeten the deal, I guess. Yeah. What What about Uber in Minneapolis makes it not good? Uh, oh, well, maybe it's not specifically Uber in Minneapolis, but just like the whole idea of summoning a taxi in Minneapolis seems very strange to me. Like, it doesn't... It's not, it doesn't, it's not a taxi city. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, and like... And like the whole the whole thought behind it is like you know at least for me if I can't get there by bike or by uh, by light rail I basically need to 
you know, I may as well drive there anyway because although it's going to be like way cost prohibitive to take a taxi, yeah, you know, outside outside of city limits of Minneapolis, then you know, I may as well I may as well like drive home basically. <laughs> yeah, and, and I know I'm I'm probably in a very peculiar situation because I do drive in from the suburbs to the city most days, but like the way the way that our taxi system is set up in Minneapolis, or at least the way that I've seen it, is that like basically once you get outside of Minneapolis, you're you know in the fifty dollar range, you know. Well, I mean, I guess I guess so for you that is a, a harder case. I mean, I I, yeah. I find there'd be like a lot more people taking Uber from their apartment that costs you know four thousand dollars in New York to their yeah. eighty dollar a plate restaurant four blocks down. Yeah, yeah. Those are the people who take Uber, and those are the people I don't know, and I am not one of them. Exactly right. That's 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 a more succinct way to get at what I was kind of you know beating around there. So yeah, definitely. I think young people use it too. Um, Where are these young people getting this money from? I'm I, young, and I don't. I, I had a friend who was at my house. It was maybe like midnight or one and she had to get to como park this i'm my my parents this is by McAllister college up yeah. to como park area and she called an uber and got home well, i guess i guess that night the rates would she, she goes to school that. in new york though so oh so 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 that wow really <laughs> maybe that was important to say earlier whoa <laughs> full disclosure <laughs> yeah i mean i don't i don't think there's there's necessarily like a problem with taking it in Minneapolis, but the rates, right? Yeah. Like the, the rates, the rates are what make it seem like totally, you know, preposterous for me to ever try to take advantage of. That's just like a whole other calculus. I don't want to even interact with. Yep. Unless I, unless I had to, but yeah, fascinating stuff. Though. Well, you could always con somebody out of their free Uber coupon. <laughs> so yeah. Right. Right. Um, I get like a free ride when I sign up, right? I'm, yep. not, I'm not sure exactly what it is, but yeah, something like that. Something along and then line. sometimes at like South by Southwest or you know special events, they'll Uber yeah. will give out you know notable people coupons to give to their friends and stuff. Yeah, yeah, they had a tent at Bobby and Steve's Auto World, uh, you know, right off of 35 and Washington Avenue. Nice, in Minneapolis. Mm-hmm. They had a tent there that was like, oh, get a free Uber ride and also free gas today because Uber. And I was like, what? Like that 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 also seemed ludicrous to me because I I don't see why anybody who had a car in Minneapolis, you know, it, were they to go to another spot in Minneapolis, um, you know, I guess. Another spot in Minneapolis would make sense because parking is ridiculous. Yep. But another another spot like in the suburbs that just seems like weird to me, right? Like, and because because most of what I do is go in and out of the suburbs, it's for me that's like I don't, I don't even understand what's going on here. But I guess now that I put that in my brain, like if if they're you know heading into the Nicollet Mall area or different parts of downtown, I want to go between the downtowns. Like I could see how you'd easily spend fifty bucks in parking if mm-hmm. you had to move you know, ping pong between three, you know, like, like 3M headquarters, Best Buy headquarters and Target headquarters. Oh yeah. That's not a good example because that's in Bloomington, but you know, like, you know, let's, let's say like Wells Fargo, you need to just go to three different Wells Fargo buildings for reasons. Um, like that would be huge because, you know, it's at least $12 parking yep. in each of those spots, even if you're only there for a short while. And I guess that might be a point at which it becomes competitive and nice to not have to sit you know, well, but at the, the, at, the, at the same time, when you're rich enough to already be able, okay, well, when you are, when your job involves going to three Wells Fargo's in yeah. a short mi- amount of time, you're probably rich enough to afford it too. That's true. That's true. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, still not for me, but if if it is for you, that's you. You being the plural you speaking to the audience. That's a okay. Live your life. Listen, listen to us in your Uber ride. Yeah, I have an Uber Uber life. I think yeah, uh, hey, if we have anyone in our audience who's in an Uber right now, like OMG. What if the Twitter Uber? Is, what, what if the Uber driver was listening to us? Wouldn't that be even worse? I mean, if better. You, if you're listening in an Uber, tweet at us using the hashtag uh, Nexus in an. Hashtag Uber Kit, yeah. Oh, Uber, Uber kit. kit. Uber Kit. Why did I go with that? Okay. Uh, also, I think that's Uber, our Uber title. Kit. I think that's our title. 
I already suggested fringe kit. Whew. Fringe oh, kit. That's yeah. good. <laughs> fringe kit. See, see, fringe, fringe kit's pretty darn good too. So I, we might have to, yeah, we'll, we'll have to see. Yeah. Well, I, uh, I kind of got to get going here. It's one thirty, and I have class at eight thirty. So go sleep. Hey, get, get out of here. Watch out for sheep. I will. Because those just roam around. Well, you I know, saw, I saw some sheep this weekend. They were in a solar solar farm field, and they were natural grass cutters. Clever. And there's Amazing. This, there's this fence that was like a metal fence with maybe six inch holes around, and they would these sheep would stick their heads through and just push as hard as they could, like. <sighs> Pulling all their their hair back and just trying to nibble at the grass the other side of the fence. It was just nibble. Uh, Denmark seems like such a magical place. <laughs> well, thanks for thanks for chatting. Thanks for bringing me in, guys. Yeah, uh, that was a lot of fun. So good to see you yeah. again, too. You know, it yeah, feels like it's been like a month. It feels it like has it has been a month. So maybe maybe uh, next week we'll be on top of it a little more. And yeah, yeah. Only have a week to go by. Sounds, Sounds good. good to me. Cool. Well, uh, do we want to do where we can find each other on the internet? Yes, of course sure. we do. Is that a thing? We should really just record this and play it. No, 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 because it's fun to make it different every time. That's true. All right, well, you can find me on Twitter at bman 479 to find out what I'm doing here in Europe. Or if you want to do tech things, at tech4789. But you probably want to follow both. Yeah, I'm just going to go with that. Good. Oh, awesome. I like it. A+. Plus. Well, you can find me also on the Twitter sphere at Brandon underscore MN. Um, you can also find a bunch of bot accounts that I sort of sometimes run manually, which kind of makes them not bot accounts. And if you want to know what those are, you can also tweet at me or check my website, which theoretically will have them updated by the time this is posted, theoretically. That update will be pushed shortly. Otherwise, you can probably find me roaming Murphy Hall because journalism. Um, hey, and Murphy also- Hall, the best place ever. Right, right. Uh, not, not that there's any real place for people to sit inside of Murphy Hall, but not you'll find me roaming it for that very same reason. <laughs> Just sit right outside of one thirty. Yeah, right. Yeah. I have I have like three classes in one thirty now, and one of them's comp sci, which is nice. weird. Oh, that is weird. I have one class right there right now. Really? Oh, which one? Uh, three thousand five mass media effects. Oh, is it with is it with uh, JLW? Uh, Jennifer it's some Williams? lady. I don't know her name. If it's Jennifer Williams, like you're in. For I'll get. I'll awesome... get back to you. Yeah, get back to me. Anyhow, where can we find you, Ryan? Well, you can find me just about everywhere, but especially on the Twitter and Ryan Amar, and of course, you can find me on the Google Plus, which is where I paste pictures and stories and screenshots and of you know all sorts of stuff. You'll you'll enjoy it. I do indeed. I love getting the email digest too. It's pretty awesome. Oh, and you can also find on the Google Plus where I post completely wrong and factually inaccurate information almost constantly just so that Ian Buck will come along and try to correct me. <laughs> Inter- awesome. uh, about everything or just specific Ian things? No, no, just I, 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 I it, it just happens and I just do it and it's like, okay, we'll go with it. And then Ian Buck will be like, really? <laughs> well, at least there's a fact checker out there. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's invaluable too. Well, it was good to, good to have you all on again. Yeah, good to see you all again. Good to chat. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll do this again. We'll do it again. We'll, we'll, Same we'll, time next week. Yeah. A little a little earlier, hopefully. Yeah, exactly. A little, a little earlier, but same time next week. Exactly. That's a Walton, that's a Walton Gromit reference. Right. I haven't oh, seen yeah, it in years. Oh, geez. It's been so long. Yeah. Isn't there yeah, some kind of new sheep or something? Yeah, show the sheep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, like you said, watch out for sheep. Watch out for sheep. <laughs> exactly. There is um, one fun tip, uh, Brandon's fun tip of the after show in theory. Um, that's probably part of the regular show. Accidental. <laughs> um, is uh, is that there's a new... Do um, so you guys know the Potter's Pasties truck that'll come in and give you these awesome like handheld pot pies that you can eat that have lots of good food inside of them? I believe you. I, I do not know about this. It's, they've come to campus and I love them so much but there's actually a restaurant in Dinkytown um, called Lands and Pasty Company that does the exact same well not the exact same thing but it's the same sort of dish but they put their own twist on it I think the owners of both of them are friends so I can say this without angering any one of them I think 
Um, but that the, these the, the folks who do it, it's like an uncle and nephew that run the place, and it's really cool. I, I ate there on Thursday before I went to this simulation thing, and I can wholeheartedly recommend it because I sat there, the, you know, for probably about an hour, and we just made Wallace and Gromit references nice. and talked in ridiculous British accents the whole time, and it was amazing. So if you're ever in Dickie Town, check that place out because it's good. I might have to. There you go. Accidental. <laughs> All right, that's 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 all for me. Okay, well, that sounds <laughs> good. Wrap. Well, have a good one. Yeah, you all do. Stay safe out there. Thanks for listening to Podkit. For more, listen to the Fringe and listen to the next episode too.